Welcome back to this week's technical. If you like this short little video, by all means, go and watch some of my older videos. If you like what you see, don't be afraid to click subscribe if you haven't already, ring the little bell so you get notifications with new videos, give the video a thumbs up and leave me a comment. It all helps to grow the channel and ultimately get more people to see the videos, all of which I very much appreciate. This week we are back to sheep and we are talking about a syndrome that is emerging. It's relatively new, at least to the academic literature. My colleagues and I would know it as outburst. However, it seems to have picked up a catchy new name recently, and that is ulcerative dermatitis. Perhaps unsurprisingly, it is characterized by roughly circular areas of ulcerated skin, typically on the lower leg, although it has been noted on the head. It certainly looks pretty painful, but they're not always lame with it. At our practice, we see a handful of outbreaks a year, often in weaned lambs in the autumn. So what causes it? That's up for debate. One recent paper examined a syndrome like this. They were able to grow Fusobacterium necrophorum. That's one of the bugs involved in foot rot and scald, and Streptococcus discalactii. That's a very common bacteria. It's one of the major causes of joint ill in lambs, also mastitis in cattle, and is responsible for a number of infectious syndromes in pigs. The investigators in this paper looked for, but couldn't find a number of other infectious agents. This included Dicolobacter nodosus, another of the bugs involved in foot rot, Treponemes, the group of bacteria that cause CODD, the Orphyrus, Staph aureus, a common skin bug, and Dermatophilus congolensis, which causes rain scald. Now, when my colleagues have investigated similar outbreaks, they found something slightly different. They often find Orf, CODD, and Staph aureus. The discrepancy in these results could be accounted for by the fact that perhaps there are two or more different syndromes that look alike but are in fact caused by different bugs. Just as the cause isn't particularly well understood, neither are the risk factors. In our, and I stress, anecdotal experience in practice, there often appears to be a link with poor nutrition, whether that's simply energy and protein or to do with trace elements. Other vets I've spoken to have mooted thistly fields as another risk factor. Although these risk factors haven't been definitively linked to this syndrome, they are often factors which warrant being investigated in their own right, because there are often more established benefits to getting these things fixed. So that's a very roundabout way of saying there's this unusual and interesting condition of sheep, but I don't know for certain what causes it, nor exactly how to prevent it. However, the condition seems to be drawing a bit more attention from academic circles of late, so we might understand it a bit better before long. The good news is, is that in our experience, it seems to respond well to the typical treatment for other forms of lameness. That is often a topical, and or an injectable antibiotic. The exact choice of antibiotic, of course, is a discussion to have with your vet. Other aspects of the five point plan for lameness probably also apply, perhaps in particular isolation. If you see an outbreak of this in your sheep, I highly recommend picking up the phone and talking to your vet. That's it for this one, short and hopefully sweet. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the little bell so you don't miss new videos. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and leave me a comment. Perhaps you've seen this condition or something like it in your sheep. Maybe you've got another name for it. Maybe you have another suggestion for a technical video. Let me know. Over and out.